Hi, this is Jashur, and uh, um, I've been working on a project at school, and uh, for the initial phase of the project, I was asked to just get a hands-on experience on Houdini and try morphing one object into another. Um, as I soon found out that uh, tutorials online are few and far between. So I decided that once I figure this out, I will help the online community by just posting a video online. Um, so what I'm planning to do right now is morphing one object to another. So I'll be using uh, Houdini's uh, rubber duck, a uh, rubber toy, and the pig head. So I'll be converting the rubber toy to a, to a pig head using uh, soft solvers. Um, so as you have, as you may be correctly assuming that I am really a novice with Houdini and I don't know much, just learning. So forgive me if I do something wrong. Um, <clears throat> uh, by the way, I'm just I'm using Houdini 16. If that's important. All right. So here we go. Um, uh, we start by creating a new object. So uh, we can do that by just hitting the button C, and then hover on to create, and then hover on to test geometry. So there are three geometries that are provided by Houdini: the rubber toy, the pig head, and the scorb. So what we will be doing is converting the rubber toy or morphing the rubber toy to a pig head. So we hit this, and then it's asking us to place uh, within this grid, anywhere within this grid. If we press enter, it will be placed at the center. So as you can see, this is the default rubber toy. So if you see, this thing is created, uh, selected once, uh, once I create this new object. So if I try to drag the mouse and move, try to move around, it won't. So what you need to do is hit escape or select this particular button. So if you hit escape, that is going to get selected. So yeah. So once that is done, you can move around, you up and down, whatever, and have a look at the model. So if you look at your right, this is an object that is created. Uh, the actual geometry which has been created is not this object. This is just the top layer, I feel, I suppose. So if you double click on this, you see that this is the geometry. So if you look here, it is object slash geometry. So this is kind of a tree structure. Let me just open up uh, the technical view so you'll have a better understanding. Yeah, so this is the tree. And so inside object, you have these geometries. All right, so yeah. OK, um, so what? So, so basically, this object, the outermost object, the first layer of the tree, will be your morphed object. So inside this morphed object, we will put both our objects, your our test geometries. So if you want to add a test geometry from within this window, what we need to do is hit right click and then do test geometry. Yeah. So that's the pig head. So we hit that and we enter anywhere here. We place it anywhere here. So it's there. Okay, it's there in the node. So right now pig heads um, display flag or render uh, display flag has not been set. So if we set this, we'll be able to see the pig. If we set this, you'll be able to see the rubber toy. Okay, so for the morph to work properly, um, the uh, the the object one or objects two sizes should be relatively uh, equal, or I mean, there should not be too much of a distortion. So what I'm going to do initially is I'm going to set his display render to this. So this is the dis uh, the render. I mean, like you want to see the frame of both the objects. This is what I do. I know there are better ways, but I have not figured that out yet, so forgive me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use translate, transform, I'm sorry. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the pig head towards the transform. I'm going to set the transform to display fact. So if, as you can see, nothing has happened as of yet. But what I'm trying to do is making uh, the pig head fall properly over the rubber toy. So how I'm going to do that is uh, translate the pig head by say 0.5 maybe. So see, as you can see, it's come up. Uh, let's see, 0.6. It's come a little more up, and I think that's that's good enough. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to scale this thing down. So uh, what I did right now is center click on scale, and then just move towards the left. So as you can see, if I do left right, if I move my mouse left right while holding the middle button, it's going to zoom in and zoom out. So I'm going to scale it to approximately you know the size of the rubber toy and i think i'm happy with this
Uh, yeah, that should do. Let's see. Uh, that's good enough. Uh, let's do 8.5. Yeah. I guess that, that should work. So, uh, if you look at the info of these structures, okay. So, these are just geometries. Uh, what we need for this to work is we need to convert them to polygons. So, how do we do that? So, uh, what we need to do is right click and then VDB from polygon. So, so I'm sorry, we have to convert these polygon structures to VDB, that is voxel database. So, we are going to convert both of these to a voxel database. So, we just connect this to this and this over here. So, right now we have the voxel database. So, we have the geometry as, vo as voxel data. So, voxel is basically volume pixels. And if you set this render, so it's in voxel data. So, it, from the geometry, it has been converted into voxels. Um, so, to make it more defined or to make it more, uh, more a bit of better resolution, we'll need to change the voxel size to something like this. So, as you can see, it's much more better. I'll do the same with this. So, if I just set this display flag, so, so it's much better. So, basically, what we need to do right now is convert from year to year. And uh, that is done using a soft solver. So I'm going to right click, type solver, hit enter, and so this guy does all the magic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the output and put into the first input, take the output of the second input into the second input of the solver. So that part is done. So what we need to do, and we are almost done. So we need to just get inside the solver, and that is we double click this. And so we have previous frame, first input and second input. So what we need to do is uh, create VDBs, use VDBs merge. So, yeah, no, sorry. Merge SDF. No, I, I'm sorry, it's more. <laughs> I, as I said, I'm new to this, so I get, you know, confused with all the terms sometimes. I'm sorry. So, yeah. So we are, we are morphing, right? So it's not merging. So what we have to do is connect the previous frame's output to the first input of morph SDF. And this is important, the second input's output to the second input of VDB morph. And yeah, I think that's it. So don't get scared if it goes off. All we need to do is set the display flags. Go back, set the display flags. And I think that's, I think that's all we need. And then we can go and hit run. So we can see the morphing already in action. Uh, we may need to increase the number of frames for it to completely be morphed. Sometimes, if you if there are less number of frames, the complete morphing is not. Com I mean, the morphing is not completely complete, uh, for lack of a better term. So again, this looks very uh, coarse. So this is actually in vox. These are voxels. So we need to convert them back to polygons. So to do that, we can we hit the convert and we join this and we set this display flag. So as you can see, this is much better. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's do some smooth shaded then. Yeah, and remove. Remove, yeah, so this is the final output. If you want more smoother results, you need to change this to a lesser value. So say 0.2, select 0.2, yeah. So now if it runs in the next cycle, it will be more detailed. Because we've changed the voxel size. So that's it guys, all the best, thanks for watching.